The new Vipar Spectra KS5000 is a foldable array with six LED bars that's designed for 4x4 coverage. It's the first LED bar fixture from Vipar Spectra. They wanted to achieve uniform coverage, and I think they made some great decisions when designing this light. It's a little more powerful and somewhat larger than competitive fixtures for 4x4 coverage. The KS5000 is a well-engineered light with superior components. It features the Samsung LM301H diodes designed for horticulture and the leading OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. I run it through four PAR and EPAR tests to measure the performance and efficiency and determine the best hanging height. The Vipar Spectra KS5000 produced some great maps with impressive numbers. I'll dive in and analyze the results. Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide, and I give away the fixtures that I test during my live premieres on YouTube. One lucky grower will win this Vipar Spectra KS5000. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and tune into the live premieres for your chance to win. The Vipar Spectra KS5000 arrived in a large box. Let's look inside. The fixture is folded up. We got some stickers in the user manual, and then this box. It's got the driver and accessories. It comes with four ratchet pulleys, which is nice. The driver casing is branded by Vipar Spectra, but the drivers inside are made by Sosin. I'll finish unpacking the fixture and lay everything out. I'll unfold the Vipar Spectra KS5000 and we'll see what we got. They include the four ratchet pulleys, a hanging cable, and an RJ cord to daisy chain. The drivers are housed in a nice case with a dimmer knob down at this end. The fixture itself consists of six LED bars with an aluminum frame and heat sinks. The Samsung LM301H diodes are algorithmically distributed towards the end of each bar, and you can see the gap between the bars is larger in the middle. The KS5000 is also several inches larger than other fixtures in this class. It measures an even 40 inches on each side. Other 4x4 fixtures will actually fit in a 3x3 tent. This one won't. The large frame and algorithmically distributed diodes are designed to promote a uniform coverage. I'm excited to run the tests and see how it does. I just got to connect the cables here to the cables coming from the driver. I'll screw them in and turn on the new Vipar Spectra KS5000. Let's check out the diodes. You can see how the diodes are distributed with concentration toward the ends of the bars. Each bar has 210 diodes. In total, there are 1,260 diodes, or 2.52 diodes per watt. There are 1,224 Samsung LM301H diodes. 792 of them have a color temperature of 3000K, and 432 have a color temperature of 5000K. There are also 36 of the OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. Together, they create an excellent spectrum for indoor horticulture. The Vipar Spectra KS5000 is available through Amazon and ViparSpectra.com. We have discount codes that work in both places. For the KS5000, use code DrMJCOCOKS. I couldn't record the product page, but I can show you the Vipar Spectra performance graphic. I appreciate this graphic because it's based on how I test lights and analyze data. Vipar Spectra is following me, and I accept imitation as flattery. At a hanging height of 16 inches, about 40 centimeters, they found the maximum PPFD at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD in their test was 833 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable PPF of 1,200 micromoles. They report a power draw of 500 watts, which is a usable PPE of 2.40 micromoles per watt. It'll be interesting to see how my test data compares. But first, let's run these data through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load all the fixtures that I test. And in the calculator on the left, you can enter your own data. The KS5000 has a listed power draw of 500 watts. If you use discount code DRMJCOCOKS on Amazon or ViparSpectra.com, your cost will be about $582. And then we need to enter the PPF or the PPE. ViparSpectra gave us data from a PAR test, which is usable PPF. 
They measured 1,200 micromoles. The calculator shows that the cost efficiency is only 48 cents per micromole, which is an excellent price, especially for a fixture with these components. It's designed for 4x4 coverage, but the calculator thinks it can cover up to 18 and a half square feet, and we predict the harvest potential at just over two pounds. I have to run my own tests, but the data reported by Vipar Spectra are impressive. After reviewing the Vipar Spectra data, I was surprised at how close I could get the KS5000 to the canopy. I got the maximum PPFD to be 1,000 micromoles per square meter at a height of only 28 centimeters, 11 inches above the sensor. The low hanging height is because there is no hot spot in the middle. Often, hanging a fixture this low means that the edges will not get adequate light, but the larger frame on the KS5000 seems to be helping. I ran this complete PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor, and then I ran an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 EPAR sensor. EPAR includes all of the PAR light, plus far red light. The KS5000 does not have any diodes dedicated to far red light, but the Samsung LM301H diodes put out some of their energy in the far red wavelengths. And the latest research shows that the far red light is photosynthetically active. So the EPAR test is a better measure of the growth potential of a fixture. But we'll check out the PAR map first. Vipar Spectra was trying to achieve a uniform distribution, and this is a pretty good result. There's a lot of light across the canopy. The vast majority of the map is in the maximum production zone, from 700 to 1,000 micromoles per square meter. And the lowest corner is still in the prime photosynthetic range, at 525 micromoles per square meter. When I flip to the EPAR map, you'll notice that all of the values go up. And this map helps us to see where the maximum densities are. They're off, center, and split. This is a result of the distribution of the diodes. By moving the hotspot away from the center, they're able to get a lot more light to the canopy. Let's run the numbers. The hanging height for both tests was only 28 centimeters, 11 inches. The maximum PPFD was right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and the maximum EPPFD was slightly higher at 1,042 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, the average PPFD was quite high at 783.7 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable PPF of 1,128.5 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the average EPPFD was 824.1 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable EPPF of 1,186.7 micromoles. That means the Vipar Spectra KS5000 delivered 58.2 micromoles of far red light, which is 4.9% of the total flux. The power draw during both tests was 488 watts. So the usable PAR photon efficiency is 2.31 micromoles per watt, and the usable EPAR photon efficiency is 2.43 micromoles per watt. These are really excellent numbers. The KS5000 has more light, better coverage, and better efficiency than its competition. The distribution should be even better at a somewhat higher hanging height. Vipar Spectra recommends 40 centimeters or 16 inches. So I ran PAR and EPAR tests at that height. If there were no reflective walls, then raising the fixture would lead to a lot of overspill loss, and we would get much less light to the canopy. But with reflective walls, the photons spread out and some bounce off the wall and come back. We'll only lose a little bit of light, and the light that reaches the canopy will be really well distributed. Let's check out the maps. First, we have the PAR map with the 400 to 700 nanometer light. At this higher hanging height, the values in the middle are lower than they were in the previous PAR test because the fixture is further away. But the values along the edges and corners are higher because they now have a better angle to receive light. As a result, the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value is less than 300 points. If we look back at the PAR map from the lower hanging height, you can visually see how the light was more concentrated. The difference between the maximum and minimum PPFD values in this map is 475 points. Raising the fixture to 40 centimeters, about 16 inches, allowed some of the light from the middle to spread out to the sides. The reflective walls prevent overspill losses, but there will be a little bit more reflective loss at this higher height. Let's run the numbers to compare. The map and data from the official PAR test at 28 centimeters or 11 inches are on the left. 
The hanging height for the raised test on the right was 40 centimeters, or 16 inches. The maximum PPFD went down from 1,000 to 875 micromoles per square meter, but the average PPFD fell considerably less. It only went down about 34 points to 749.5 micromoles per square meter. The usable PPF slipped to 1,079.3 micromoles, so raising the fixture cost us about 49 micromoles of usable light. That's less than 5% of the total flux. But with less usable flux and the same power draw, the photon efficiency dips to 2.21 micromoles per watt. These results highlight an inherent trade-off. To get the best uniformity, you have to sacrifice some efficiency, or vice versa, but I think uniform distribution is more important. We can see the same relationship in the EPAR test results. At the lower hanging height on the left, there's more light overall, but less light around the edges. Raising the fixture 5 inches improved the distribution, but came at a cost of about 59 micromoles of usable light. So which of these heights will lead to better growth and results? It's going to be close, but I lean toward the results from the higher hanging height. The benefit from increasing the lowest densities should more than offset the costs from lowering the highest densities. In a 4x4 space, you can run the Vipar Spectre KS5000 anywhere from 11 to 16 inches and get excellent results. I publish all of my test results in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. You'll find the video, all of the maps, and my written review. Here are the main data for the Vipar Spectre KS5000 from the official EPAR test. It's more than enough light for a 4x4 space. You can see that we rate it for over 18 square feet and we estimate the harvest potential from the KS5000 at 31.8 ounces. That's almost 2 pounds. Here you can find our shopping links and discount codes. Use discount code DRMJCOCOKS on Amazon or ViparSpectra.com. Your cost will be about $582. That gives the ViparSpectra KS5000 a cost efficiency of only 49 cents per micromole. It's not the cheapest fixture for a 4x4 space, but with the top-end components and superior performance, it's an excellent deal. The KS5000 has many advantages over competitive fixtures. It has better diodes, it's a little more powerful, and it's bigger. I think it was smart to make the frame 40 inches square, so the winning number in the Partest Premier giveaway is 402. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the Premier, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Below the test data and the grow space calculator, you'll find my written review. As the prices of grow lights have come down, I see more and more growers putting lights that are designed for 5x5 coverage into 4x4 tents and running them a little dim. The larger frames provide amazing uniformity, and the fixtures have all the power you would ever need in a 4x4 space. However, the upfront cost can still be prohibitive. The Vipar Spectra KS5000 is priced like a 4x4 fixture but it takes a step in the direction of the 5x5 fixtures. It's physically larger and more powerful, and the top-end components contribute to excellent performance. The ambient temperature during the tests was 24 degrees Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit. I measured the KS5000 surface temperatures after running the tests. The LED bars reached a maximum temperature of only 47.5 degrees Celsius, 117.5 Fahrenheit. The casing on the driver was even cooler at only 41 degrees Celsius, 105.8 Fahrenheit. I tested the dimmer at the lower hanging height. As you can see, the PAR and EPAR percentages are closely aligned with the dimmer setting. But I would recommend running the fixture up at 16 inches. At that height, 50% power will be ideal for seedlings, 75% power for early veg, and 100% power for late veg through flower. The KS5000 is the first LED bar fixture from Vipar Spectra, but they learned from the competition and designed a light with some real advantages. I think it's the best light for 4x4 coverage in its class. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Elaine at Vipar Spectra for sending me the KS5000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next Partest Premiere giveaway. Learn about all our Grow Light giveaways 
on the Deals and Discounts page at CocoForCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next Grow Challenge, and try your hand at the Grow Light Calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.